Hi everyone, so today I'm going to talk about getting money out of China in 2020 in a productive way. And the reason I've made this video is one of my most popular articles online, which you can see below, is talking about getting money out of China and it was regularly updated last year and will be updated this year. And the reason I was reminded to do this video as far as I was talking to a very good friend in China who I used to uh, actually work with many years ago and um, he's actually moved to a second tier city in China and he went to his bank a few days ago and he actually tried to withdraw money out of China and the bank teller said to him well I'm sorry sir but you can only exchange 500 um, uh, you know dollars a day that's the rule in China and he said no I've got all of this proof and I've already found out online that I can you know, do this legally, because I can show you, you know, this is legally made money. And she had no idea about the policy. And what I'm trying to say is, is that, I guess it's not just China, it's a bit like in the UK or, or the US, if you go into a normal bank, most of the bank tellers have just knowledge on what they're used to dealing with, right? An average bank teller in China is not gonna be an expert on the, the rules about foreigners managing to send money out of China. So it is true. There are some legal ways you can send money out of China just by going to your bank, but there's two issues with that. Number one, a lot of the time the banks have no idea about the exact rules and regulations and they've just been told by their manager that look, if a foreigner comes to your bank, it's $500 per day, when in reality there are some ways you can legally actually uh, send more than $500 out if you can actually show where the money's coming from. But a lot of people have no idea about that. And number two, a lot of the banks charge too much money anyway. So in which case you should actually consider whether well, using a bank is the best thing. So what are the other options apart from a bank? So I would say that for large amounts of money, using a currency company is a good option. I mean, I've got access to a couple of currency companies that have been fantastic, but that's only a good option for people who are like sending 50, 60, $70,000 or more out of the country. Another option, especially for like small amounts of money, let's say you've got small bills you want to pay, even things like Western Union or, or something like that, yes, it's not very good value, yes, it's a bit antiquated, but for just very small amounts of money, PayPal, Western Union, that kind of thing, hell, even something like Bitcoin, and I'm not, I'm not advocating using Bitcoin to send money out of China, but you know what I mean, it's, it's not a big deal for small amounts of money. If you need to send a couple of hundred dollars out of China or pounds, Things like the currency spread and those kind of things, it doesn't matter as much, right? It's a small amount of money. It's not like $100,000 to buy a house or something like that. You've also got apps now that can, can be used and um, you know are pretty efficient. And finally, a good option if you've got a Visa or, or, or credit MasterCard in China is to use your card to pay for an investment. So for example, in mainland China, there are many people who they'll have a, a mainland Visa or MasterCard which is connected, it could be HSBC, ICBC, uh, China Construction Bank, and essentially say if they invest a thousand dollars a month, it's taken directly from the card, they invest for a period of five, 10, 15 years, and then, you know, obviously when it comes to actually withdrawing the money, they could either withdraw back to China or indeed to their home country. But that option obviously is a case of killing two birds with one stone, because then you're not just sending money out of China, you're also investing money productively. So. Uh, that's a good option for people who want to do both things in China, not just send money out of China, but to invest. Because some people assume that, well, first you need to send to the UK or the US, then invest the money. But often that isn't the most tax efficient way. You can actually invest directly from China to an overseas brokerage account.